is so windy, I'm not really filming and I shouldn't really be back on this pasture anyway. I don't know if you can hear me, I've got my mic just shielded by, by the lapel here, so you may, you may get a bit of sound. I tried a new field today and there was nothing on it at all, it was really gloomy. It was the quietest pasture I've ever been on, I think it must have been swamp or something at one point. And um, everything was so deep, even the cartridges were about two foot under. I think anything decent was just too deep. It was really soft and sandy. But I've come back up here literally for an hour, found a couple of absolutely cracking things. And now I've just found something I really think is, is actually extremely rare. Um, I haven't got all the mud out of it yet. But I saw this enormous pin sticking out. It looked like a hummingbird. And actually it's a brooch. God knows. I mean, it's in such good condition it could be made yesterday. But I always say in these films that the, um, the technology of badges and brooches hasn't changed in 2,000, 3,000 years. So it's absolutely beautiful. It's silvered and it looks to me to be a sort of an insect of sorts. Um, it looks to have wings, it looks to have a sort of head there, and it looks to, the, the wings are sort of, of like of a ladybird or something, they're sort of pinned back, and I can see the sort of abdomen and its little sting or whatever. <laughs> it's got its catch, it's got its pin. <sighs> was it made yesterday, or was it made 2,000 years ago? God only knows, but it is absolutely beautiful. I've never found anything like it. We will have to go back to headquarters immediately um, and have a closer look at this because I'm, I'm absolutely completely gobsmacked. <sighs> ah, I'll leave all my stuff here. Well, bird or bug? Bug or bird. My God, I have been lucky recently. I mean, I can't explain it. It's a funny game detecting. You definitely get um, troughs of, of feast and famine. And you might be pleased to know that I've been out the last three times I've been out, I found absolutely nothing in very good fields as well. So maybe it's my turn now to, um, to really not be finding an awful lot. But thank God, not before finding this. I mean, I, I, I think this is the, be the nicest thing I've ever found. Maybe because if it is a bird, then, then I mean, look, I mean, I mean I, as you can see, I collect ornithological stuff. I mean, I've always been crazy about, um, about birds from a very early age. Um, and so if it is a bird, I mean, you can see why I thought it might be a bug. I mean, that's what my gut feeling was. I, I obviously sort of psychologically or mentally, I had that in my mind. I had it up that way up and I could see the sort of horns or eyes there and then the wings folded back and then it's thorax or whatever you call it, abdomen, um, ending with a little bit of a sort of a sting or something there. But when I got it home and turned around the other way, it looked much more obviously a bird with its wings back again and its tail there. Um, you could sort of see sort of vague eyes there or eyes sort of where, where the eyes would be and a, and, and a fairly obvious beak. Now, <laughs> God, already I'm thinking this is extremely unusual. Now, the first port of call for brooches is Hat Hat. And I very recently acquired the visual catalogue, which is all his brooches in just, j j just laid out in, in um, just laid out in illustrations. And then it points you to which of his books um, the, the, the brooches appear in more detail. Now, there is a section here on zoomorphic brooches, i.e. looking like animals, if you want to eat a better description. Um, and they t these tend to be Roman second century brooches. I don't think there are that many zoomorphic types of the Anglo-Saxon period. I might well be wrong. Please let me know if I am. And on a quick look at this, there's loads. There's, there's dolphins, there's hares, there's lions, there's deer, there's birds even. There are some birds with very similar um, wings, sort of looking like the wings are backwards. The difference being is that I think without exception, every single illustration here has the bird's head raised. So it looks, if you're looking down on it, 
like one of my birds, but then it's the cross section is is a sort of two dimensional, as it were, sort of neck, etc. So it's actually coming off the brooch, whereas in this one, it's not. So I put it on the detecting hob, the obvious place for us. And again, the first thing people reckon was second century zoomorphic brooch. Hello, Tascals. Come on up, 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 up. <laughs> Such a nice day outside. We will go for a walk in a minute, but meanwhile, down, good boy. Um, so I put it on the detecting hub and they too, the experts, sort of hedged their bets on a second century Roman, um, Roman brooch until someone said that it reminded them of Viking raven brooch. So I looked that up and all I could find was a very similar modern copy of something that was found, I might pronounce this wrong, called the Apacra raven brooches. Now, Apacra is a place in Sweden, and those, the ones that are found, they could be anything from 500 AD onwards. Now, all I could find originally was sort of modern copies of the Apacra brooch, until Kath from the Detecting Hub managed to track down on Instagram an original picture of the Apacra ravens, and it looks very similar. The tails are slightly different, but you can see where they're, they're coming from. It's not the same but you can, you can sort of get the idea. Now, at the same time as Kath um, put this, found these, um, this was also that now spotted by one of the experts on this sort of type of thing, who firstly says that I should record it, and he's right, this will be recorded. Um, I don't generally, for lots of different reasons, particularly like dealings with the pass and flows, but this is a significant object, and therefore it has to be. And he reckons, that this is probably is a continental sort of Viking Scandinavian type brooch um, and it's a very unusual find in this country. I mean, uh, the, the, perhaps unique, a unique find in this country. It's got its hinge in perfect condition. It's got its pin in perfect condition. I don't dare move it too much just in case. It's got a beautiful point to it, which is just probably as sharp now as it was when the day it was made. It's got its catch there, missing the, 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 the lip of the catch, but so, <laughs> you can't have everything. And I'm absolutely thrilled. This is, the, this is the best thing I've ever found, I think. Forget the gold and silver. To me, that's the nicest thing I have ever found. And I'm absolutely, completely, I mean, I don't know what to say. I'll keep you updated on it as and when, because um, as I said, I will record it and we'll see what the experts say. But meanwhile, oof. wow, that's wow. Well, I didn't need to show you any more close-ups of this because you would have seen it, but oh my God. Whoa, I'm, I'm speechless. And the other thing I found was this. Now I found a similar some, one to this recently. Um, this is headquarters worthy as well, but we won't, we won't go back for it now. Um, here's a picture of as I, as I found it, I, I, you could see me food, um, taking the, um, all the rubbish out of it. And there was actually a sort of tendril or something growing, growing out of it. I thought, my God, this is a bit of modern rubbish. It looked like a bit of wiring or something, but it's not, it's a gil it's one of those gilded double buckles and it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, that's one, there's two of the, I think the best things I think I've ever found, one after the other. Um, as you know, I've done this pasture for so many times now. It's my go-to place. It's absolutely beautiful. It's my sort of happy place. <laughs> what an awful thing to say, but it is. It's just, just completely fabulous. And I know what to go for now. I just, I'm looking out for those really deep squeaky sounds, even though that was almost on the surface. Ah, oh dear. Um, well, I didn't have much time left, but we'll go on for a bit longer. Right, well, let's have a very quick look at this because I got it home and cleaned it up and it's absolutely wonderful. And you can see so much of the gilding and, the, um, and where the pin would have come from and you can see the ridge where it would have gone. Now, as I said, I found a very similar one very recently um, in my last video or two videos ago. Um, and these date, th these are unusual in themselves. Um, they are double-ended buckles. They seem to always, apparently, according to the past, to have a pin on one side and three holes, um, and often accumulating in one of these sort of S shapes 
or a little sort of kink, whether that was done through wear or whether it was meant to be like that. It seems, if you look at this one, that it's meant to be like that. Now, they're not exactly sure what they were for, but they reckon that they would, they would have buckled one end and maybe fitted um, onto the sort of bridle or part of the leather of, of the horse's head or whatever, and it would have, it would have had, had probably some equine use. Now, this one, again, I mean, wow. It's got its very heavy sort of up curve dent there. Um, unusually, the past says these always have three holes. Well, this doesn't have three holes. This has only got one hole where the buckle, where the pin would have been, and then a central mount stud there for it to have gone in somewhere. And there doesn't seem to be anything on that side. So God knows how that would have worked. But just such a beautiful thing. The, 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 the past dates it from dates them to about 1200 to 1400 typically wide range and um, I think that might be earlier it just feels earlier and it is just a beautiful thing I'm absolutely thrilled with it but let's not dwell on it too long because I've got a lot to get through um, so let's go back to the field I'm really sorry if you can't hear me through the wind it is the, coming up to the end of March and even though it's beautiful today rain's forecast um, and the wind you know was, was forecast too I'm always talking about the wing pulls in this field. And I think that's another one of them. It's not quite a double beep, so that's why I'm digging it. If it was a double, if it was a ding da ding, um, there's nothing really here. I can't really concentrate having found that brooch and that buckle. I'm a little bit... Well, that's encouraging because it's still in there. Even though it's slightly in the, in the edge, so it's not really that deep. Still in there. I can see, there we go. Here we go. I've said it so many times. Oh, look, there's a curlew behind. Um, I'll try and get a shot of that in a second. If I said it once, I said it a thousand times. It's not the same if you come up here and you don't find one of these. It's a jetton. But this is an absolute beauty of one. And it's nice and thick. Now, I think it's just a classic rose and orb type. No, it's not a rose and orb type. Is it the Lion of St. Mark? I think it's a Lion of St. Mark. And um, I can see the lion and its tail. That may, I think that's a 15th century one. I mean, I, they date, I always say about now, I've done a video on these, um, but that's a really lovely one. I mean, they do not come out better than that. I'm completely thrilled. I think it is the lion. What an absolute beauty, my God. <sighs> well, that was worth digging, even though, as I said, I mean, that was on the edge, that one. Of being could have been very much in ring pull territory. Well, here comes the forecast rain, so I'm going to be really quick. I don't want my camera ruined. This sounds a bit coppery. Still in there. Speed digging. Still in there, just in the side. They reckon it's only going to be showers, but it's another jet, and would you believe it? What an absolute beauty, another one. <laughs> Gosh, now that is a rose and orb type. Still a Krautwinkel Nuremberg one, like the last, I think, but it's definitely a slightly later one. But I've, I've not found two in such good condition. I mean, look at the writing on that. <sighs> 
Glick. I mean, you rarely see them come out of the ground like that, these coins or these tokens. Very, very rarely. And that's two now. Where's the other one? I think that, that one's definitely earlier. God, lucky me. The rain stopped, I think, so... Gosh. I'm finding stuff in incredible nick today. Welcome back very quickly to my whistle-stop guide to Jettons. And the reason being is I'm always talking about them because I do find quite a lot, especially up on that pasture. But I don't find nearly as many of these as I do um, hammered coin. And they are rather wonderful things to find, especially if you find them in good condition. Now, I'm really fortunate to have found a, a few English ones recently and they're quite rare. But, but very quickly, they seem to have originated in France in the 13th century and they are basically reckoning counters. They were used for mathematical calculations, much like an abacus would have been used. If you can imagine an abacus being upright with the beads or the balls or whatever on sort of rods or whatever it is, can you, you know, just, just take yourself back to nursery? Well, this would have been the other way around. You would have had, you would have had a flat surface, a board or a, or a sheet or something, and these counters would have been used in various columns to aid with mathematical calculations, basically. As I said, they started off, they seem to have started off in France. By the 13th century, the reign of Edward I, um, Britain and um, England were producing their own. And they look very much like the sort of coinage of the time. I found a really good one recently. Um, and I, God, I, as soon as I've cleared up my desk and put everything in its, in its place, I can't for the life of me find it, but I do have this one to hand and it is a slightly later one, probably mid 14th century and it's called the Standing King type. And here are some of the French ones, probably not necessarily 13th century, but really, really lovely examples. There's that one's got a crown. This one's my absolute favourite. It's got a dolphin or a fish or something on the back of it. Um, I think those, these dates are sort of mid 14th century. Um, generally speaking, I think I'm right in saying that there's, well, certainly in my experience, the thicker they are, the earlier they are. The more mass produced they become, as I'll tell you in a second, um, the thinner the copper and the thinner the jet in itself. Because of the influx of these counters from France, by the end of the 14th century, England stopped producing them. Those go out. But Come the middle of the 15th century, Germany starts being the main producer of these and it, to the demise of the French ones. And the ones I found that day are definitely earlier types of the, Ger of the German ones. They're commonly, the, the later German ones are referred to as Nuremberg Jettons because that was the main um, centre of where they were being produced. But this one, which is a um, Lion of St. Mark, that dates probably early 16th century. Um, by the time you get to the mid 16th century, um, they are, they're being properly produced in Germany. And there are families like Krawinkel and Schultz um, who are the main producers. And the second one I found is very much one of those. And it actually says very clearly on one side, um, Schultz, um, Hans Schultz. There were three Schultzes. I don't know how you to be completely honest, I don't know how you date them. That is quite a thin one, but it's in very good condition and it is rather beautiful. And the other one, as I said, is definitely a line of St. Mark that dates it to slightly earlier. And here we have a couple of my ones, which are later ones, definitely rose and orb type. You've got Crowwinkle there. Um, and these get produced, you know, in heavily until the end of the, um, until the middle of the 17th century when they you know, when counting but using abacuses and jettons becomes less important um, due to more advanced methods. And you find that these, the production of these just don't, gently fizzles out. They were still produced for, as gaming counters and stuff like that, but not as, as jettons, as reckoning counters. They, so there you go. A whistle-stop guide to jettons. And um, let's go back to the fields. Gosh, the wind suddenly died down, the rain's gone straight over and we can film again. Just going to finally show you once and for all how much rubbish 
I do have to contend with in this field. That's what I mean by a double, a very obvious double, which I've, I mean, there are thousands and thousands. You just don't dig them. If it's a double beep, you don't, you just leave it because it's going to be one of these. Because I wasn't really even going to film today because I, and I wasn't really finding much. <laughs> Sometimes when they're really close to the surface, they're the, most, they're the hardest to pinpoint. Right. I mean, if that was slightly deeper, you'd re get really excited about that. I'm not going to get my other camera out for a close-up on that. That's it. Now. That's what I've got to, that's what I've got to really avoid. Now, if these are very slightly deeper and the double beep's not there, then I'm fooled into digging these. But then that jetton just now, that was, that was very close to the surface. So it sort of depends on the mood you're in up here. I mean, if I were to dig every signal like that, I would dig 4,000 holes. Well, that's something else as well. I mean, look at that. I have found these before up here. Um, it's a dagger shape, but not one. In fact, last time I was up, I found one with a bit of decoration on it, which in itself is quite unusual. Usually they're quite plain. But look at this one. It's got all sorts of piercing, rectangles there and a and, um, couple of circles. Gosh, the tip to it even looks a bit zoomorphic. Don't think it is, though, but I don't know how old it is. But again, what a find. What? <laughs> I'm, I think I might be dreaming today. Well, <laughs> the wind's completely died down. The sun's come out. It's lovely. My God, four seasons in a day today. Now, I started digging this. It was very faint. I mean, that could easily be iron. I, it's, it's deep, whatever it is. And it's not particularly... Well, that sounds better. That's sounding a bit more encouraging. Still think it's a bit... Pharisee. I'm not pin. I always tell you when I'm pinpointing well, and I tell you when I'm pinpointing badly. And it, today's not a great day. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I felt that was, that was touch and go whether I dug that. And it is, it's a very old iron nail. But um, yeah, I, I, I've got to go for those now. It's worth going for those. They're not always iron nails. And I'll just check. Yeah. This is quite close. <laughs> That's too close to the surface, really, as well. But I've got something fabulous to show you. <laughs> God. Today started so badly, I can't tell you. I spent two hours really, really in the doldrums. And I only spent... I wasn't... I just thought I'd come up here and have a bit of a laugh. Not take it too seriously. And then suddenly... I mean, I think conditions are really good for... Well, that's not the end of the world because I can see it, actually. I think it's 2p. It's a coin, I think. Oh, it's a cartridge. Oh, it's a cartridge. Bugger. 
Yeah, I mean, it did, it did sort of, it sanded a bit like that, but look at this. God knows what went on here, but whatever it was, I think it involved horses. It may have been, God, did they have tournament um, grounds just for tournaments? It's full of strap end and horsey stuff, and that double buckle I think is horsey. But this is the most beautiful strap end with its original gilding um, still um, very visible. Um, it's complete, it may even have a bit of the leather in there. Um, probably not, there's probably just mud now. But that's where the buckle would have gone there, and the pin would have gone sort of, well, it would have gone across like that and that would have held your piece of leather or whatever it was to strap whatever it was you needed to tie up with your leather strap hence strap end um that's an absolutely gosh the things i'm finding in this field right well the clouds are gathering And it's been absolutely amazing and completely unexpected and the winds picked up again and I think we better call it a day on that but that's just thank you very much for watching and see you next time <laughs>